Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some advancements and enhancements to RPCS3, an emulator for the PlayStation 3. Throughout the video, we're not only going to be taking a look at how these enhancements have improved the emulator as a whole, but also how many of these advancements have improved many of its most popular games, for example Red Dead Redemption, The Last of Us, the Ratchet & Clank series, Persona 5 and God of War. There's a lot to cover in this video, so let's kick things off by taking a look at The Last of Us and exactly how it is running in its current form on RPCS3. So it's probably been about 4 or 5 months since I took a look at The Last of Us and how it was running, and to be honest I was quite pleasantly surprised with how it was performing at least in this brand new or latest master version of RPCS3. Previously in these exact same areas I would only be able to get around 5 to 8 frames per second, and as you can clearly see in gameplay by the frame rate indicator in the top left hand corner of the window, I am maintaining around 14 15 and sometimes a frame rate of about 18 frames per second. You can however see that many of the visual glitches that were apparent in older versions of RPCS3 are still fairly apparent in this one including the RGB flicker that can occur from time to time. Please do also be aware that in most of the gameplay footage you're going to be seeing in this video, I am going to be using either fully built or partially built shader caches for each and every specific game as I wanted to show exactly what the performance of said game is going to be like when you have your shader cache either full or almost fully built. I want you guys to also remember the fact that I am using an 8700K, so a 6 core 12 thread CPU, which for the entirety of this video I had clocked to 4.8 GHz. For anybody who's not aware of it, RPCS3 is able to take advantage of many, many cores out of your CPU, so pretty much the more cores you have and the higher core clocks those cores are at, the better the performance you're going to have in game so technically the 9900k or 9700k is going to be one of the best CPUs you can possibly have for this emulator. Regardless of any of this it's still pretty cool to see The Last of Us running anywhere near to even half speed especially so considering the last time we took a look at this game it was running at around 5, 6 and 7 frames per second. Let's move on to our next title for this video Persona 5. As I generally do, I am going to be using the 60 frames per second patch for Persona 5, and in this school area you can very clearly see that in areas where we were previously not able to attain a locked 60 frames per second, like this school courtyard area or the internals of the school, we are now getting a much much more stable performance in the newer versions of RPCS3. When we come to the internal areas of the school, you can see right here that I am also getting a much much higher frame rates, and while unfortunately I am not able to get a locked 60 fps in this area i am not getting dips down to around 30 or 35 frames per second like i previously would in this exact same area stability wise we don't really have too much to talk to in relation to persona 5 since this game has been basically fully playable on rpcs3 for months upon months but it's still pretty damn nice to see all of these performance optimizations even in games that have been fully playable for so long Next up, let's jump across to one of my favourite titles of the PS3 era, God of War 3. In the last 2-3 to three months, God of War 3 has moved from a laggy, buggy 8-9 to nine frames per second to the performance levels you're seeing in-game right now, ranging anywhere from around 20 frames per second to around 35 to 45 frames per second in my own personal experience. For anybody who played this game on the PlayStation 3, you will remember that while this game, yes, did target 60 frames per second, it very, very rarely met that target, running basically at around 30 to 40 frames per second for the majority of its gameplay. It's pretty damn exciting to see this game running very, very similarly, at least performance-wise, to that experience on the PlayStation 3. We also need to remember that for this gameplay footage you're watching right now, I am indeed running the game at 2560 by 1440 resolution, a much much higher resolution than the original console. Again, when we drop down into the internals of the Titan Gaia, we're going to see even more optimizations to this game's performance on the emulator. Where previously it would be running at anywhere between around 24 to 29 frames per second, it is now running much much closer to 45, a very very impressive optimization in just the space of 2-3 to three months. 
Okay, next up we're going to be taking a look at yet another very, very popular game on this emulator. Let's take a look at Red Dead Redemption. Honestly, this game, performance-wise at least, hasn't seen a ton of optimizations. However, I did want to include it in this video since stability-wise and playability-wise it is much, much better and is in pretty much the best state it has ever been on RPCS3. In my testing for this game in this video, I was able to play it for about two and a half hours without it crashing. Unfortunately, it still does suffer from random crashing. It just seems to be far, far less frequent than it ever has been before. Unfortunately, the only way you're going to be able to get 30 frames per second in Red Dead Redemption is by playing it in a top-down fashion like so. So, in relation to performance, the best you're going to be able to expect from this game on a very high-tiered CPU is around 15, 16, or 17 frames per second in actual gameplay. Now, I have been meaning to do a comparison in performance and playability between this game running on RPCS3 and also running on Xenia. For anybody who's not aware of it, Red Dead Redemption it does actually run really really well on Xenia emulator and emulator for the Xbox 360 so keep your eyes peeled on the channel that video should be live in the next few days. Next up we're going to be taking a look at two of the most popular games in the Ratchet and Clank series for the PlayStation 3, Ratchet and Clank Into the Nexus and Ratchet and Clank Tools of Destruction. First up we're taking a look at Into the Nexus where as with pretty much all of the games we've seen so far in this video it has seen drastic improvements to both its graphical output and and also its performance levels. This game has gone from a flashing buggy mess of vertex explosions running at around 10 to 20 frames per second to a very very playable experience. As you can see in gameplay right now we have very very good graphical output at 1440p and while yes we do still have some issues with some vertex explosions especially so on monitors and on some specific light sources in the game regardless of those vertex explosion issues that occur from time to time into the nexus is now in a much, much more playable place. Unfortunately, as with many other games on RPCS3, this one does still have some crashing issues and until those are solved, it cannot be listed in any kind of way as playable. So hopefully, as with the optimizations and stability improvements we've seen in the last few months, we'll see further improvements to this one in the coming months. Let's move on to another Ratchet & Clank title, this time Ratchet & Clank Tools of Destruction. So in the past two months alone, Ratchet & Clank Tools of Destruction has seen several optimizations, two specific optimizations have made it much much more playable. The first of which is a fix to a crash that would occur anytime you were swapping or changing levels or areas, and the second is a crash that would occur anytime any of your weapons would upgrade in game. Thankfully, with both of those issues now solved, this game is now much, much more playable and aside for some performance issues and stability issues as pretty much every game has on this emulator, it is in a much, much more playable state. Performance-wise, the game runs pretty well, I would say, in the areas in which you spend 90% of your time. However, there are areas in gameplay such as the hub worlds or many of the large city levels where performance is pretty bad. In comparison to the previous level area where we were getting an almost locked 60 frames per second, in this densely populated city area, our frame rates can drop as low as 24 and 25. Okay, so for our final three games of this showcase, we're going to be taking a look at three Uncharted games, Uncharted Drake's Fortune, Among Thieves, and Drake's Deception. First up, we have Uncharted Drake's Fortune, the very first game in the series, and again, yet another game which we have previously looked at on the channel. While this game has seen performance improvements, it has seen some weird graphical issues manifest in the form of these strange colourful lights that happen when you move your camera around rapidly. Unfortunately, toggling right colour buffers or disabling the vertex cache didn't fix this issue, so hopefully this regression is going to be fixed rather soon. Now, in relation to this game's playability, stability and performance, it is now, as with many of the other games we've seen in this video, in the best state it has ever been on the emulator. In the gameplay footage you're watching right now, it is running at 1440p and it is agonizingly close to a locked 30 frames per second almost all of the time. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at the second game in the Uncharted series, Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. 
Unfortunately, unlike the previous game in the series, Among Thieves is not running the best on RPCS3 at this point in time. As you can see, the cutscenes, while they do play, they're not playing in exactly the best possible fashion. And similarly, when you get into gameplay, regardless of what settings you use, you're going to have a pretty much unplayable gameplay experience due to a very, very bad graphical output. Regardless of anything I've just said, when you consider the fact that this title would previously not go in game at all and now it is going in game and rendering graphics, it's a pretty damn cool optimization. Okay, so onto our final game for this video, let's take a look at the third game in the Uncharted franchise, Drake's Deception. Unlike Uncharted 2, Uncharted 3 is actually rendering its cutscenes quite well and at very, very good performance levels. However, I do believe these cutscenes are pre-rendered and are going to run at 30 frames per second regardless of what you do. Jumping forward into some gameplay, you can see a much truer picture of how this game is currently running. It has many, many graphical issues, especially with light sources, very, very similarly to The Last of Us, in fact, and also very similarly to The Last of Us, its performance levels are anywhere between around 12 to 17 frames per second area dependent. Unfortunately, due to this game's reliance on quick time events, just like you're seeing in gameplay footage right now, and the fact that some of the quick time events later on in the game are pretty much life or death situations, given the fact that it has such bad graphical corruptions in some of those areas, and also given the fact that its performance levels in some of those later quick time events is so low that it's almost impossible to complete them, that would make me say that unfortunately, at least right now, Uncharted 3 is not in a playable state on RPCS3. Hopefully, as with God of War, another game that had some issues with quick time events, the performance of this game can be improved to a point where it is in a very, very playable state. Hopefully, they can also fix the RGB and horrible light flicker that happens not only in this game, but also in The Last of Us. When they do, on that day, I will be a very, very happy man. The final thing I want to showcase in this video is a drastic improvement to the building speed of SPU caches in RPCS3. Thanks to the addition of multi-threaded SPU LLVM compilation, the amount of time you're going to have to wait around for your favourite games to boot on this emulator is going to be drastically reduced. As always guys, if there are any games, either a PlayStation 3 or otherwise, that you would like to see me test on this channel, do not be afraid to leave them in a comment below this video, and if I can get access to that game, I will test it out for you absolutely no problem. If you yourself want to help with the development of RPCS3, you will find down in the description of this video a link to their Patreon fund, so head on over there and donate if you want to see this awesome emulator get even better in the future. That's about it for this quick update video on RPCS3. Once again guys, cheers for checking out the video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.